Hey, hey, we made it to Friday again. I know you feel blessed and refreshed. Thank you for joining me for the last day of this week's topic. We've been talking about how to live by the Spirit based on what the Bible says. So every day this week so far, we've had um, three verses, three Bible verses that we talked about um, that related to each topic. So I pray that, um, you know, that you are, that you're able to go back and read the entire chapters for yourself so that you can um, understand how we got to each part, you know, how we got there in the first place. Also, I encourage you to join me here on this channel at 7.30 p.m. Eastern, uh, Monday, well, every day, every day of the week, including the weekend. Where I'm going to be reading different books of the Bible. So, today's inspiration is coming from the fact that life is short. There's a lot going on around us. And, uh, you know, last week we talked about preparing our kids for death because it's just something that is inevitable. But it is also inevitable that we all must go that way as well. Are we ready? Do we? live by the fruits of the spirit so that we can live forever instead of dying twice. So with that being said, I appreciate you joining me. Good morning, Ken. Thanks for coming in. Good morning, Mr. Steve Gilmore. Hey, Frugal Mama, good morning. And Mika is here. It is so good to see each and every one of y'all. Good morning, good morning. So I'm going to try to keep it short for those coming back on the replay, but you already know how that goes. <laughs> so, so far this week, we've dug into a total of 10 different uh, fruits of the Spirit. And this inspiration is coming from straight from the Bible. Again, we're looking at Galatians 5, chapter 16 through 26. And that is where it's going to talk about uh, living by the fruits of the Spirit. It's going to talk about our sinful nature versus the way God wants us to live. So I've just taken um, a broken down verses 22 through 23, and I've written down those things that were mentioned right there as fruits of the Spirit. So again, that was Galatians 5, 16 through 26. And I just encourage you to read the whole chapter. I'm actually reading Galatians on this channel right now. So... With that being said, today's title is Patience and Peace, and with patience. Patience is big. It's real big for me, and I notice it being big for some people around me as well. The only person that I remember with great patience was my mom, and even then, sometimes she fell short, you know? So that just goes to show you that we are not perfect people, but God comes after those who are imperfect. He comes after us because he wants to make us pure. He wants to bring us back to, you know, how we started, how we we're supposed to be. Hey, sissy, good morning. He's supposed to bring us, he wants to bring us back to loving the way he loves and forgiving the way he forgives and the peace and the, the gentleness and the temperance and all those things that we've talked about so far. So, um, but just going to God over and over, going back to him is always, um, it's always needed because we always sin. Now, I'm not saying that, you know, after we've prayed to God to deliver us from doing this or that, that is terrible for us. And then we go back and do it anyway. That's different. God doesn't like that. But what I'm saying is, um, look, I just got, <laughs> I just got thrown off. What am I saying? Uh, what I'm saying is that sometimes we have sin as far as the way we think or, uh, you know, the way we feel about something that is not necessarily the right way to feel based on God's word. So uh, we're, we're imperfect and we just never know when our time will come. So let's just uh, try, try, try every day. Mm -hmm. This is what it looks like. All right. So. The first one I have today, under patience, patience is first, it's big. Um, 
Oh, well, yeah, I forgot this part right here. The Old Testament. Because there's the New Testament and the Old Testament in the Bible. The Old Testament talks about patience in such a way as being wise and being a virtuous choice. Like, I'm choosing, I'm wise enough, I know better, right, to show people and God how um, how we're supposed to live as far as impatience. Um, Proverbs 19 and 11 says, a person's wisdom yields patience. It is to the one's glory to overlook an offense. So that just means that to me, anyway, I'm not a teacher. That just means to me <laughs> that a person's wisdom yields patience, meaning I have such significant patience or wisdom, right? Wisdom through Christ, through the Bible, that I know when my patience is being tested. I know when to stop. I know when to not leap off the deep end like I would used to, right? So, yeah. With that being said, when going through trials, be patient with God and be patient with others. Yeah. Well, I don't know. We can't help but to be patient with God. I mean, you would think, right? Well, sometimes I guess we can get impatient with God if we are praying to him for something and we are not being patient. We're we're eager. So we're like, oh, God, please, you know, I prayed to you for this and you didn't make it happen. God, where are you? Right. We've done that. So, yeah, that makes sense. Um. Galatians 6 and 9. Can I read the New Living Translation? And it reads, So let's not get tired of doing what is good. At just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't give up. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And that word is again blessed by God. And that's just telling us that we need to have patience. Just telling me, let me let me correct myself. I'm not teaching. So it, he tells us right there, let's not get tired of doing what is good, meaning taking care of our family, what going to work, uh, whatever it is, cleaning the house, uh, speaking life into somebody, going to church, all these good things, praying to God, seeking him every day, reading his word. We can't get tired of what is good because if we do, then we could miss out on our blessings. Had you just held on a little bit longer, had you just kept going a little bit further, had you not take, sat down and taken that break, then you would have been blessed beyond your biggest measure, a harvest of blessing. When I think of God and a harvest, I think of the whole sky. It doesn't end. <laughs> Come on now. Thank you, Jesus. Oof. All right, so that speaks for itself. The second one, I'm going to go to Philippians 4 and 6. Philippians. I, already, I always have trouble with this. Philippians 4 and 6. And it reads, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Amen. And it doesn't, we just know that if we have patience, then we're not, we don't have time to worry. We don't have time to sit and figure out what's, what's my next move going to be. Where's the, uh, where's the light bill going to come from? Or we don't have to do that because we have patience in the Lord and we have prayed to him and we have patience and we're waiting on him to do what he does. In the meantime, we just carry on. Mm. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he does. Amen. We have to give thanks to him, especially after we see how he got the glory out of a situation. 
maybe we finally decided to wait and be patient on something that was pretty big to us. Maybe we didn't give up. We kept pushing on through. So now it's time for us to reap all the blessings. And of course, we want to stop and give honor and praise to God. We can't make it seem like we got there on our own. We definitely didn't get there on our own. Woo, all right, amen. So the next one is Esclasia 7 and 9. Esclasia, I can't ever spell that right. Let's see. Uh, mm -hmm. I think it's ESS, sorry. Esclasius. Try that. So that reads Control your temper for anger labels you a fool. Amen. I mean, that's simple, right? Control your temper for anger labels you a fool. Mm. That's big. That's big for me because before I decided to start changing my life. I didn't realize that temper was related to patience. Well, you know, I guess that was me being simple minded. But that's just true. Had I known that my temper could was attached to my impatience and my irritability, then I probably would have fixed it a long time ago. But it took God a long time ago to start doing something and it's taking his word to really transform. For anger labels you a fool. I just went through and read the book of Proverbs and in Proverbs it talks so much about how about wisdom. Proverbs is a book of wisdom so it's talking about you are foolish if you do this. You are a fool if you do that. And it's like, wow. Some things you wouldn't even think about unless you were actually in there reading it. But are we patient enough to read the Bible? Are we patient enough to turn on the audio and let it read to us? Hmm. Are we patient enough to, to grab the Bible and go through God's word and follow along to what we're hearing? Are we patient enough to go back and read it again and even take notes? This is all things that we have to do living in the spirit. We have to do this stuff in order to make it into heaven. Whenever our time comes. I pray to God for 100 plus years. For all of us, for all of his people. But the truth is that God is doing something. And he's coming back sooner than we think. He wants us to be prepared. He wants us to speak, share with his people. He wants us to come and be one. He wants us to work together, be helpers of one another. He wants us to have joy, peace, and all these things that we're talking about this week so that we don't have to die twice. Amen. It just gets me so excited now. It's almost like, oh God, are you coming back? I'm a little eager. You know what I mean? Like this, I'm, it's bittersweet. You know, it's one of those things. It's bittersweet. This life is beautiful, but oof. you just think about the blessings that come after this. It's, it's just beautiful. All right. So let's go ahead and jump into the peace part of this. And peace, the peace of God is, is uh, it goes beyond all understanding. It's like, it's like, um, what was I going to say? It's like a calmness, a calmness over your whole everything, your body, your mind, your spirit. You just... It it goes so much bigger than anything around you, than anybody around you. Um, the peace of God. When we think about the peace of God, we think about um, 
the fact that I don't want to deal with this bill. I don't want to deal with these fussy children. I don't want to deal with this messy house. I don't want to deal with these bill collectors. I don't want all these things that we deal with as people of God. I don't want to deal with any of that without knowing that God is right here with me. How many of us have got to a point where we're like, I'm done. Nobody cares. Nobody's listening to me. Nobody's um, pouring into me. Nobody's helping me. And I'm just done. I'm not doing this anymore. Right. And we just give up. Maybe we go on strike. We ain't cooking dinner. We ain't washing the dishes. None of that. Well, we do know that that that's our our given jobs. That is our duties through Christ. Our duty is to be a parent. Our duty is to be a caregiver. Our duty is to speak his word, whatever our duty is, to be an influencer, a content creator, whatever it is. You have to seek God for what that is. But how can we complain knowing that that's our duty? Think about God. He is not complaining. And he has all of us, however many billion, trillion people was in the world, right? On this earth or even even on other continents. You know what I'm saying? Not just this world, the universe, right? How much patience and peace does he have to have for each and every one of us? He never throws in the towel. He never throws his hands up and says, I quit. That's why he's telling us these instructions in his word so that we don't quit either. Hallelujah. Look, I'm over here talking and God talking to me, y'all. You know how it happens, right? It definitely happens. Whew. So with that, I just went somewhere else. Wow. Mm-mm-mm. I'm going to be reading the first scripture for peace is going to be John 14 and 27. John 14 and 27. I was confused because I didn't realize that there was a John, a first John, a second John, and I think even a third John. So it got very confusing for me, but it's the John, not the first John, just John. (laughs) Okay. John 14 and 27 says, I am leaving you with a gift, peace of mind and heart. And the peace I give is a gift the world cannot give. So don't be troubled or afraid. Amen. Yes, because that's beautiful. Again, I encourage you to read the whole chapter to get back to where we are. While you're hearing this. But. I believe, because I have to do my own research a little more on this, but I'm thinking that we're talking about the spirit of God. Um, yeah, which is peace of mind and heart. Yeah. I mean, the spirit of God is is everything. It's all these things that we're talking about this week. The Holy Spirit, I'm leaving you with the gift, peace of mind and heart. Yeah. I'm thinking he means the Holy Spirit. And the peace I give is a gift the world cannot give. So don't be afraid or troubled. That's interesting. It makes me think about maybe probably about a year and a half ago or so. And I felt like everything around me was like in shambles. I felt like everybody was mad at everybody. Uh, I felt like there was problems at everybody's job. Everybody was getting sick and, and all this and that. And I was just like, I don't know what is going on around me, but I don't like it. Right. And I'm like, I just want peace. I just want peace of mind. I just want everybody to just chill. And I want everybody to just be peaceful. Right. And so my family, my media family right here is looking at me like, what are you talking about? Because any other time I was a part of the uproar. I was a part of the unpeace. 
right? Just by um, maybe one moment I'm happy, I'm singing. The next moment I got an attitude because I can't fix something. The next moment I got an attitude because my stomach hurt. And now I'm happy again because I get to go outside and run through the grass or play around with the kids, right? So then I come back and I got an attitude again because now I'm hungry. It's time to make dinner. Who go make dinner? Me. And then I had an attitude because I, <laughs> come on, y'all. So, wow. The peace, the peace that I was calling for out to my family and they all thought I was crazy can only come from God. Hey, man, oh, y'all. So then that's when God really was like, I want you. I feel like he just grabbed me and was like, come on. And ever since then, I've just been going. Wow. I never really thought about how this thing all started. But that's how it really started. I was demanding peace from my family, from those around me. Even from what I was listening to, the music, I was like, I'm tired of listening to this. I'm tired of watching these movies. They are, they're terrible movies. You know what I mean? I was just calling for peace all around me. And God just came in like a soaring eagle. My God. Mm. Well, we all can have the same thing. The same thing, y'all. All right, so then the next scripture is 1 Peter 3 and 11. And then there's one more, and then I'll get out of here. 1 Peter 3 and 11. And that one reads, turn away from evil and do good. Search for peace and work to maintain it. Amen. Exactly. That's just what we were just talking about. When we finally... Make the decision to turn away from evil and do good. Well, what is evil? Evil could be a lot of things. It could be physical things that you might be doing to your body. It could be um, the anxieties that are going on in your mind. It could be the self-doubt. It could be the fear of maybe you're fearful to, to tell somebody how you really feel. Uh, it could be the laziness. Maybe you just don't feel like getting up and cleaning up the house today. Maybe you just don't feel like cooking for the kids. So you're going to send your teenager in there and cook. All that stuff. And, and more can be considered evil. So it, it doesn't have to be huge. It doesn't have to be grand. It doesn't have to be shining bright like, you know, this is my sin. No. It could be our thoughts. It could be what we think about others. It could be just not having a relationship with Christ at all. So once we get tired of doing evil, we just do good. We have to call on God to give us strength to do good. There's that peace. If we know that God is peace, God is everything. But if we know that God is peace then we should be able to get through anything. It's part of contentment. And work, search for peace and work to maintain it. So it's not just something that is going to fall upon you because trials and tribulations happen. Life happens. But are you going to find your contentment? Are you going to find your place in the middle of that stuff? Work at it. Work to keep Remaining peaceful through Christ. How do you do that? Pray, read the Bible, surround yourself with people who are doing the same thing. Um, spend some time alone, really hear God when reading the Bible. So then the last scripture is Psalms 4 and 8. Hey, Mr. Terry. Good to see you. And it reads, in peace, I will lie down and sleep for you alone. O Lord will keep me safe. Amen. Excuse me. And that's just in many different ways that God keeps us safe. Right. Going, you know, whether we have to go somewhere, whether we have to uh, go, go to work or deal with certain type of people or 
you know, maybe you got a meeting and you don't know what type of energies you're going to be mixed in with in that meeting, right? So we praying, we praying about everything. In peace, I will lie down and sleep. Well, God's word is also not physical. So we can mean lie down and sleep, or we can mean that I am free. I am free to walk amongst this earth and do whatever I want, think the whatever way I want, and, you know, just be through the spirit, let me say, not whatever way I want, through the spirit, the good way now, right? Because we know better. I'm free to just go amongst and just not worry. Huh. In peace, I can go out to dinner with my family and not think and worry that something's going to happen to us. Amen. For you alone, O Lord, will keep me safe. You alone. God is one. God is all these things that we have talked about this week. And I just thank God for being God. The fruits of the spirit. Living by the spirit. Let's talk about it real quick. Meekness. Having God all over you. Being humble. Being gentle. Long-suffering. It means to have self-restraint when you when you are angry. You're able to endure hardships, trials, and tribulations without becoming angry. Goodness. God is gracious in his goodness. He is generous to us. He is generous because he keeps waking us up. He keeps giving us chance after chance. To get it right with him. He is very generous. He is very good. And his mercy. And his patience. We These are the spirit. The patience. The, the peace. And, and it shows. When you live through the spirit. It shows. Amen. The joy. Even though it says James 1, 2, and 3. Wait, that's not what that says. Never mind. <laughs> I was going to say that this right here says uh, believers who are poor have something to boast about. For God has honored them. Hallelujah. You still have life in your body. You still got clothes on your back. Temperance. Self-control is temperance. Not um, giving in to temperance in the Bible they talked about as far as alcohol. But it can also mean caffeine, gluttony, and all of, a lot of different things. Faithfulness, forgiveness, and love. So I appreciate each and every one of you. And I'm so glad that you could join me today. I hope that you have a good weekend. And stay tuned for the reading of God's Word every day at 730. Yesterday, I did not upload it. It was it was ready. I just did not schedule the broadcast. I was so sad and then went back and deleted it. I have a bad habit of trying to clean things up and I deleted it anyway. <laughs> I love you and I hope you have the best day. Let's go see what frugal mama's doing. Stay humble, stay encouraged and stay you. Bye bye.